Good evening and welcome to the Wednesday Evening Reflection. Bishop Ariel Santos here. Again, may we be able to impart to you uh, what the Kingdom of God is about <clears throat> in order for you and all of us to know our God, to grow in the knowledge and love of Him. Because that's the nature of our God. Uh, he is love. And so we know Him, we know love, we experience it for ourselves, and we spread it as, uh, as our calling, uh, as we know Him and we make Him known. Tonight we look back once again to uh, <clears throat> last Sunday, and particularly the Gospel from last Sunday, where Jesus lays out the, the, uh, with clarity the meaning, the cost of being a disciple of his, a follower of his. And he simply says his famous words, If anyone wishes to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Deny himself, take up his cross, and then follow me. Now, what, <clears throat> what would that mean, right? What, would, uh, what did it mean in the first century to the hearers what does it mean to us now? But when he said this to his disciples, <clears throat> he had just asked them, uh, you know, I don't know if you remember the story, they were on their way to Jerusalem, they were, they were in a place called Caesarea Philippi, and there he asked his disciples, who do people say that I am? And they answered, some say Elijah, some say one of the prophets, some say John the Baptist, come back from the dead, uh, and what not. And Jesus asked them, what about you, you yourselves? Uh, these, were, these are what people say about me, but who do you think I am? What, who do you say I am? And Peter <clears throat> Obviously inspired by the Holy Spirit, hearing the, vo the, the voice and the revelation of the Father, said, You, Jesus, are the Christ, the Messiah, the Deliverer of Israel, the Son of the Living God. And Jesus told him, Peter, you know, man did not reveal that to you, obviously, because they have their opinions and all of them are wrong. And he said, but God, the Father himself, revealed that to you. And he said, you are Peter, and upon this rock, I will build my church. The foundation is the rock of revelation from God himself. We don't build on anything that is man-made or according to man's opinion or thinking or ways no we build the church of god on his word what has god does god have to say you know in the in our denomination the charismatic episcopal church we have uh, a principle one of our bedrock principles and we call it uh, consensus government and in very simple terms it's, it just asks one question. What is God saying? Because not, you know, when we meet in council and we operate in consensus government and we base our decisions uh, according to the rules of and principles of consensus government, simple, uh, that one, one very basic thing we, we are after. Hear the voice of God in prayer and through each other but hear the voice of God. We're interested in what he has to say, not what man in his wisdom, in his own understanding has to say. So we try to be sensitive to the voice of God through his spirit. That's what consensus government is about. Because we only build the church according to, in God's kingdom, according to his will and what he says. So. Our only mission is to try and hear, to the best of our ability, try and hear the voice of God. What is he trying to say? Because our agenda uh, 
is what his agenda is, what his direction is. That's our only agenda. That's only what we will do and what we will follow. And so Jesus said, God the Father himself revealed this to you. And so, Peter, you are rock upon this church. I will build my church. Upon this rock, I will build my church. And then, just a, a few verses after that, Jesus now proceeds to tell his disciples, <clears throat> Okay, you said I'm Christ. That's right. Christ means king, anointed king. That's right. So we're going to Jerusalem, right? And they would say, of course, we're going to Jerusalem because you're going to be crowned king there. It's the capital of Israel. So Jesus tells them, we're going to Jerusalem. Now you have... You have accepted me king, and you're right, because I am king. But chief priests, the scribes, the religious leaders in Jerusalem, at the temple, they will reject me. They will reject me. Not only that, they will hand me over, they will insult me, they will uh, uh, accuse me falsely. They will hand me over to Gentiles, Romans. And they will torture me, insult me, crucify me, and I will be put to death. And on the third day, I will rise again. <clears throat> so, Peter, one of the most outspoken, I'm sure the others objected to that too, but Peter pulled Jesus aside and tells, tell the, uh, told him, he, he, don't speak to us that way. Don't speak to anyone any potential disciple or follower that way because they will stop following you. Why would they? Who would want to follow a king who would be sentenced as a criminal and killed? There's no future to his kingdom if that's the case. Plus, you know, maybe in Peter's mind, we have our own ambitions as well. We have our own motivations. We want we you know we were we're the first to follow you. We are, we're your inner circle. Uh, me, I'm not not just part of the twelve. Uh, your your cabinet, so to speak. Uh, but I'm I'm your inner circle. You know, maybe maybe I'm a, a very good uh, very good contender for I don't know position of vice president or secretary of state or whatever. Uh, if if you say you're gonna die, what about our what about our uh, wishes, our ambitions? And so he tells them, this should not, this must not happen. It will not happen to you over in my dead body. And Jesus tells him, after saying you are the rock upon this church, I will build my church. You heard from the Father. After saying that, he addresses Peter as Satan. He tells him to be quiet and get behind them. Get behind me, Satan. You are not setting your interests. Uh, you are not. Uh, you're not putting priority on the on God's interests, but man's. Because he obviously didn't understand. So Jesus gathers now his the rest of his disciples, and he tells them, "Okay, let me make one thing clear." I am the Christ, yes. I am king, yes. But the reason we're going to Jerusalem is, yes, for my coronation. But not the kind of coronation that you're thinking of. It's not that we're going to overthrow the Caesar. It's not that we're going to have uh, uh, you know, a royal, royal celebration. No. I am king. I will have a crown of thorns. I will have a processional where I will carry my cross and on that same cross I will be enthroned I'll be enthroned because that's my throne the cross is my throne so that's what he said to them if anyone wishes to be my disciple my follower to come after me let him deny himself like me let him deny himself and take up the cross and follow me remember when I was born when I was born, I wasn't born like the rest of the kings of the earth. 
And I'm not going to be crowned like the rest of the kings of the earth. Not going to be fanfare. There's not going to be VIPs. There's not going to be this and that. It will not be the glory of man that you will see at my coronation, at my enthronement. It will be the glory of God. And the glory of God is God reconciling the world to himself, not counting men's sins against them. God forgiving the sins of any. Even his torturers, even his killers, even the undeserving. That's what will happen. Because that's the kind of king I am. and That's the kind of kingdom I rule over. And that's the kind of subjects I will have. So I'm telling you this, he said. I'm telling you this. You, you, you want to be my disciple? Be willing to deny yourself. Deny yourself. Even of your own opinion. You, know, you don't just deny yourself of your rights and your privileges and what you think is due to you. Just even, you know, not just those things. You deny yourself of even your own understanding. Even if uh, you think God's ways are foolish. You know, who would want to, uh, their, their king to be crucified? Nobody. You know, nobody. Even just to be killed, you know, much less crucified. It's shameful. Shameful. And that shame would, would rub off on his followers. It's like they're, they're going to say, your, your leader is a fool, and you're all the more fools for following a fool. <laughs> right? This is why St. Paul says, you know what? I'm not ashamed of the cross. Not ashamed of the cross. Because it is the power of God to save lives, save sinners. That's why he said that. You know, and so we are supposed to also follow, deny ourselves. What is the meaning of the cross? There's a lot of meaning to the cross, but you know, when the, the disciples heard it in the first century, they were not thinking of a spiritual symbol, they were thinking of a loud and clear and terrifying, blood curdling message from the Romans that says to them. You mess with us, you will suffer pain and shame and torture and humiliation because you don't resist our domination and our power. But Jesus' way of overcoming that, and we've seen that, there, that, that empire is overthrown now, his way, his way of overcoming coming that is not sword against sword or catapult versus catapult, or spear versus spear, or cannon versus cannon, or bomb versus bomb. It's love versus violence. Love versus hate. Forgiveness versus unforgiveness. That's his way, and it's been working. For 2,000 years now, it's been working, and continues to work. Ah, yes, there still is hatred and darkness in the world. There's still violence and greed and lust for power. Even in religious circles, true followers of Jesus, true disciples of Jesus, they walk after Him. They get behind Him and follow Him as they obey there. They get behind Him and take up their cross while they follow Him as He takes up His cross. And then they deny themselves. So, <clears throat> may we, the season of Lent, uh, be confronted with this as if we examine ourselves. Like we always, like we, we said, Lent is a good season to, good time to, to reflect on whether we are still in the faith. So let us do that. Examine ourselves. Are we still in the faith? Are we fulfilling what is required of a disciple? Do we deny ourselves? That's why we fast, we pray, we give. Because we deny ourselves. What's you know what the, the money we earn, we can spend on our needs and wants. We instead deny ourselves and we give to others, and then we focus on prayer, and we focus on denying ourselves for the sake of others, because that's who our God is: is love. Love means deny to my own hurt. I provide the good of 
another that cost me and with no strings attached. Even if they, you know, sometimes uh, take offense at the good that I do. That's what, that's what love is. That's who our God is. That's the way it is in the kingdom of our God. Again, thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, we will see you again next week on the Wednesday evening reflection. Until then, God bless you.